Well, new today, former Vice President Mike Pence making headlines, releasing excerpts from his upcoming memoir in a new op-ed, the article titled, My Last Days with Donald Trump. And it details his final days in office with Trump, including tense moments surrounding January 6th. Let's bring in News Nation Washington Bureau Chief Mike Vicara. Vic, the former VP really giving his most comprehensive version yet of what happened on January 6th. And that's right, Nicole. And I don't think we can ignore the fact that this happens, you know, less than 24 hours after the polls closed on what was really a momentous midterm election and one that saw Donald Trump, the former uh, president under whom uh, Vice President Pence served, uh, seeming to be vulnerable for the first time in quite some time uh, within the Republican Party as the kingmaker. Pence coming forward with this op-ed, published again, as you said, in the Wall Street Journal, an excerpt uh, entitled, My Last Days with Donald Trump. And he portrays sort of a day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week period there between the election leading up to January 6th and ultimately Joe Biden's inauguration, where Pence says he was under increasing pressure from not only Donald Trump, uh, but from John Eastman, the lawyer that uh, Donald Trump had into the Oval Office to try to present some sort of legal framework or underpinning for a challenge to the electoral vote. Remember, it was Mike Pence in his role as vice president that presided over the electoral vote count on January 6th, uh, and that led to the mob and the insurrection uh, that came into the Capitol that day, many of them chanting, hang Mike Pence. Uh, Pence, as part of this op-ed, uh, recounts a conversation he had, a telephone conversation on that morning, on January 6th, when Donald Trump, President Trump, then President Trump, called him. Uh, he said, uh, the president laid into me, quote, you'll go down as a wimp, he said. If you do that, I'll make, I made a big mistake five years ago, referring to when he chose and selected Mike Pence as his vice presidential running mate. Uh, Pence goes on, but when he said, you're not protecting our country, you're supposed to support and defend our country, I calmly reminded him we both took an oath to support and defend the Constitution. So that is Mike Pence presenting himself as a conservative, yes, but as a principal conservative, rejecting all of the overtures and the pressure from the president on down uh, to reject those electors uh, on January 6th when the constitutionally mandated procedure took place in the United States Capitol, Nicole. Well, Vic, you know, you mentioned this at the top. You know, why now, the day after the midterm election, the day after there was supposed to be this expected red wave? Right. I, I mean, I think that sound you hear now is the starting gun for the 2024 presidential election. You heard Tom Dempsey talk about the president and the questions that he faced at his press conference, uh, including one that says, according to an exit poll, that two thirds of Americans think he should not run. President Biden defiant, defiant when answered, asked that question today. Uh, but Mike Pence now sensing the moment, jumping out in front of this parade uh, when Donald Trump appears to be vulnerable. His grip on the Republican Party is weakening. Mike Pence understands that the people who charged into the Capitol and disrupted that constitutionally mandated pro uh, process, the MAGA, MAGA Republicans that Joe Biden's been talking about during the campaign, they are never going to be supporters of Mike Pence. Mm -hmm. So Mike Pence uh, is making a play for uh, or making a gamble that the pendulum is going to swing back the other way in the Republican Party and traditional conservatives like Meg Pence will once again fall into favor, giving him a chance two years hence in the presidential elections. Nicole? All right. Our Washington Bureau Chief, Mike Ficarra, thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.